So for the narrative, it's basically the NOFA priorities in your work plan um, and a couple, group, a couple other items. So the NOFA priorities really were the most confusing part of the grant application, if you ask me. Um, the, they weren't written um, in a manner that you could easily um, understand what they're talking about. So I had to, um, I've asked HUD many questions. I participated in the HUD webinar and, and I've consulted with Anita and this is where I'm at with the NOFA priorities. Before I begin, these are um, items that may not apply to every agency. So each year HUD announces their um, priority areas. They have more areas than are included in this application, but they want you to talk about work you're doing that would that is um, in these areas. Um, so I think you all can probably answer at least the training piece on this. Um, for fair housing, they want you to talk about how you train your staff on fair housing. So this can be, you know, maybe there's some internal training on fair housing laws or um, your agency procedures and practices on um, how you advise clients on um, discriminatory practices or where to make complaints or um, um, maybe, you know, there's some training on your outreach activities. Um, and I think you could all probably answer that. The second one is... Karen, could I just jump in for a second to ask a clarifying question? Um, is this, how does this differ from the AFSH part you were talking about before, or is it kind of the same in terms of talking about the activities that the agencies do? Well, this is just about training. So that okay. affirmatively furthering fair housing was about um, organizational activities that you will um, under you take, um, you know, in the community, and this is about how you train your staff on fair housing. It's more, okay, more so it could be training out. on how to do outreach. It could be, yeah. Training on, okay, okay, yeah. Thank you. They don't define it again. It's it's pretty broad, and in in my point, in my my thinking, you know, put something here. You know, we can't get points if we don't if we don't put something here, and for the NOFA priorities. We have to have, we have to have at least one third of the network um, saying they do the activity in order to get the point. Um, so you know, throw something out, even if you think it might be a stretch, and uh, you know, I'll kind of sort through it or ask me beforehand. Um, so um, that means I think like eight agencies. I think we're at twenty-two subs for this. Um, so staff training, and then the next one is the mobility counseling. H have any of you heard of this before? Is this new just to me, or do, do others know about this? Karen, it's Michelle. Anita and I kind of talked about it when she was here in December doing our audit. Yeah. But it, it's, yeah, it's pretty new. Well, you know what, I, I found on the internet that HUD did work in this area in like the 90s. And um, what's interesting to me is that um, this topic, not titled mobility counseling, but more broadly um, how public housing dollars are used, um, has been the topic of a couple of different uh, things in Minnesota lately. Um, there is a um, professor at the U who wrote a research paper on this that was just published. And I think uh, Sue Haig from Habitat sat in her role at Met Council uh, talked about strategic goals Met Council has around this area, which would be essentially decentralizing public housing in these areas. Um, I think it can be controversial. I think there's probably opponents to this um, thinking that um, and there's probably, um, you know, people in favor and not in favor of this. Um, so if your agency doesn't do this, certainly you can list NA. Um, and like I said, mobility counseling, um, moving people to areas of, 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 or out of, or to areas of low poverty concentration and low minority concentration basically means out of the cities, into the suburbs. 
you know, in, in greater Minnesota, um, I'm, I'm sure there's maybe off the reservation, um, or perhaps there's some neighborhoods that are more poverty concentrated in greater Minnesota, you know, in some of the bigger cities, Rochester, St. Cloud, Duluth. Um, I think it also may apply more to renters, you know, helping them find housing in these areas. But um, just out of curiosity, does anybody do this type of counseling? If you think of ways that you maybe do this in unofficial ways or official ways, you know, like I said, just kind of describe it in that area. You know, keep it under, this whole section has to be under 500 words. <laughs> so real brief. Um, and uh, let's see, I got a couple questions online. Um, can, can you include pre-purchase counselor training as the fair housing training? Um, is the fair housing training. I, can you tell me what you mean uh, or give me an ex example? That was Trista. Hi Karen. Um, I'm just thinking like the kinds of training. Um, I know I went to the pre-purchase counseling training this past fall and so in that training we kind of I guess kind of talked about these types of things and what we can say during counseling. So I'm just wondering if that's something that we can list as a training for fair housing. Yeah, if the training did include, you know, training on fair housing laws um, and, and related stuff, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at this next NOFA priority. Um, uh, capacity to provide technical assistance. This one was, um, um, let's see catching up in my notes here. So I don't know, do any of your organizations provide TA on fair housing to other groups? Homeless shelters, um, uh, uh, people at the public housing, or do you provide specific TA to clients on fair housing? I mean, I think you might give them information up front, um, but I wasn't sure. Karen, we have, it's Michelle. Uh -huh. We, you know, our, our heroes department at St. Paul does this. Okay. Okay. You guys are unique. St. Paul well, has, we're unique. yeah, there's only two um, official fair housing entities in Minnesota um, that get funding from HUD. One's City of St. Paul, another one's in Duluth. And I just learned that recently. Um, okay, so I don't anticipate, you know, maybe a lot in this area, but if you have questions, holler. And, um, you know, oh, my group brainstormed. So what type of things do you include in that, Michelle? Or could you elaborate on what the hero group does? Oh, they do, you know, they. I mean, they look at all of our Section 3 contractors, which are low to very low income contractors that we hire, they, um, I mean, they do a whole gamut of things. So in, in HUD applications in the past, I've always included, you know, narrative from their website okay. on exactly what they do. I mean, they look at who we hire for everything, who we pay contracts to, who moves into our properties. Um, we just, you know, had a big meeting with them, and they look at what the district councils do, what they're paid for, I mean, to make sure that we're in compliance with our comprehensive plan and all the fair housing laws. It's, they, they just, they kind of oversee everything that's done in the city. And you're lucky because you're part of a big organization, the city, that has this department. But I imagine many of the nonprofits don't have a fair housing kind of department. <laughs> right. So, so. Which um, is sometimes not a good thing. <laughs> so, again, we need a third of our subs to be able to answer this question. And I, I um, you know, try your best, ask questions. We'll see what we get. The NOFA priorities are only worth four points. Um, so they're not worth a lot of points, but they probably take take up a lot of time. Um, 
So there's this other NOFA priority or this second section to the technical assistance is to partner with a, a fair housing and community-based organization. And the center is going to do this on behalf of the whole network. So I am working on getting an MOU with um, Michelle's group. Um, that she mentioned, and um, we will be planning fair housing training for the entire network. Um, so we'll have some type of local training in the metro and perhaps a webinar on fair housing. So I wanted to find out what uh, fair housing topics you've had training on in the past, um, what's been helpful, or what you might be interested in learning about. So some in Rochester, we were required, if you have rental property, we were required to take fair housing, um, a class that was about two hours long. But, I mean, and I don't, we, I just went to have the understanding, but it just went through all of the information on what is considered fair housing, what is con what you have to do and you cannot do, and it's really detailed. Okay. Have, have most of you had fair housing training? So fair housing training can, you know, talk about the laws and regulations, talk about the complaint procedures. It can talk about, you know, advertising tips, um, suggestions for using non-discriminatory um, procedure. Excuse me, uh, procedures um, in your application and tenant selection process. Um, can, you know, unlawful housing prop uh, uh, practices. Um, discriminatory practices in mortgage, lend in mortgage lending, sexual harassment, discrimination against persons with disabilities, and oftentimes this is about rent, uh, rental situations or the mortgage lending, which we're a little bit more familiar with, but a lot of this tends to get focused on rental. Um, so if you do have a relationship with an entity, please include it. Um, you know, or if you were working on getting something, you have something, um, please do include it. I'm hoping that um, this MOU on behalf of the whole network that um, lists all 22 organizations, um, you know, will will sh will also you know count towards this. Yeah, when we get something that looks like a fair housing type issue, we refer it to legal aid usually. Okay. All right. Um, so I got a question. What is technical assistance? Well, um, this is technical assistance. <laughs> this this webinar we're on. So it's um, it's information and advice, so you can make an informed decision. I guess in a general term. Um, I also heard that uh, Chris Galler does some training. Okay. All right. All right, so let's keep going here, and I think there's uh, health and safety. So HUD asked us to type in this narrative, um, health and safety, um, past experience improving residents' health and safety by promoting green, healthy uh, design, construction, rehab, maintenance, etc. And I list some things that I think you do that you could include. You know, for those of you who do home stretch, and you talk about radon testing, lead, ma lead paint, carbon monoxide. Um, some of you who have weatherization programs, maybe they're a little outside of housing counseling, but maybe they started to incorporate a healthy home assessment, um, something where they go and, and kind of, I don't really know all what's in it, but I imagine they advise on ways to kind of look through some of these radon, lead paint, carbon monoxide things. So, or any public education you do on these topics, um, you can include. Now, we do have a radon fact sheet, so I think that is something, if you use that, you could talk about. We're updating it, um, and uh, a new updated version will be coming out soon. All right, and then the next NOFAs are green building. Um, and uh, so this is how you inform clients about one or more green building standards. So this could be in pre-purchase counseling, um, you know, probably a home stretch more related, but if you talk about LED certification or if you talk about Energy Star, 
Um, there's some components here about green buildings, maybe when they're looking for homes, some green things they can look for. I know that some of the workshops have special sections they've added on these topics. Um, so you could plan to add something on this. It could be a handout. It could be a fact sheet. You know, it could be... Um, um, you know, part of your home inspector's section. Ask him to do a couple of bits around the um, around this topic. So I think this is something we could certainly build in in the pre-purchase program. And then uh, same thing for uh, renewable energy. The next one. And again, I just did a slide here defining renewable energy. Really, it's energy like from sun, wind, rain, geothermal heat, and um, and this is uh, maybe a stretch, but you might have to consult with some of the other departments in your, in your organization. If your organization does building, um, public housing, uh, construction, rehab, maintenance, or financing, um, they probably, if they get any HUD funds, they probably have a statement about this and know that they need to reach goals and renewable energy. So for both green and renewable energy, you could talk about things that are done in your agency. It wouldn't have to be specific to um, your housing counseling program, um, but um, things that your agency does that you can maybe tell your clients about. And Karen, it's Michelle again. We've always gotten points on this because, you know, our foreclosure prevention department is within the Department of Planning and Economic Development at the City of St. Paul. So we do all this other stuff, too, within our department. Okay. So, so you know, for other communities that like us that do this, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm just thinking of, like, Washington County, Dakota County, if they do bigger-type projects. Habitat. The, habitat, yep. So... Uh, you know, folks that do that type, and and there's some other. You know, Nita does some building. Nita does, yeah. you know, other stuff, and and a lot of the nonprofits do home improvement lending, lead window programs. As long as it's all done within your organization, HUD has always given us points for that kind of stuff. Yeah, great. Thank you for ex expanding on that. Uh huh. Okay. Any questions about green renewable energy? Um, before I go on, again, these are 500 word um, um, and, and per section, and you kind of have to look at the instructions to see the sections, but the fair housing, mobility counseling is one section, the technical assistance and partnership is another section, and then this health, safety, green building, and renewable seems to me to be its own section. So, you know, we're, we're you know, you can go over, I guess, 500 words if, if it's really hard for you, and I'll kind of sum it down, <laughs> um, but try to keep it brief and concise. So next is the work plan. You should all have a work plan in operation, and every year just plan to update it. And that updating could be small things or big things, depending on uh, how your program is changing. Um, and this is just all of the items that encompass the work plan. Um, and um, there's a couple things for you to attach. This is part of our oversight. We will include um, reviewing your work plan and your your these attachments as part of our a part of the center's oversight. So uh, so you know that. Um, but I thought I would ask if anyone had questions on any particular topic in the work plan. Karen, this is Brenda at Carver County CDA. Yeah. Our work plan, plan has always been approved by Anita, and we just had our review, and it was yeah. good, as you saw. But, you know, as part of the being uh, members of the network, we cite that we refer Spanish-speaking people to Anita and, and so on, and, and Hmong, where we send them. That's always been okay, but we've never had an MOU with any of those entities because... The assumption has been is that if we're all part of a network, that's a given. So do we need to reach out and get MOUs from all the members that we would let me refer look, people to? Let me look 
up that in more detail because we're all kind of a local network and we know each other. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, Anita's approved it in the past that yeah. way. Okay. All right. I will check. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other questions about the work plan, any of these topics? So this, you know, to have a question, you had to have kind of read what you need to include here, and maybe some of you aren't that far yet. Um, so don't um, hesitate to, um, you know, email me or call me if, while you're working on it, you have questions. All right, so um, succession plan. Well, let me see, I think I just got a question. Oh, quality assurance ideas. Let's go back. So why don't we talk about quality assurance oversight. Um, first off, in the Housing Counseling Handbook, they list what you have to do. And so you could essentially kind of scribe a lot of text right from the Housing Counseling Handbook on oversight. Um, also in the HUD 9900 form or 9900 um, that you, um, where the um, we, where we applied for funding and list those assurances. They also list oversight activities that you need to do there. And they include things like um, supervisors should re have a plan in place for reviewing their counselor's files. Um, and, um, you know, this is a physical review of files. And then um, if there's any, any issues, you should have uh, included in the plan you know, how you tackle issues or problems and how you resolve them and what you do about them, kind of like a action items. Um, I'm trying to think, what are some of the other items that you guys do um, when it comes to oversight? Well, maybe we're all getting to the end of this long webinar and uh, <laughs> losing um, uh, collective thinking. So I think that's my best advice is just to head to the HUD handbook, and there's a lot of a lot of good uh, information there on on to get you started. Karen, it's Michelle again. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give one other pointer to folks because yeah. I know you mentioned somebody's work plan was like 25 pages long. <laughs> yeah. Anita's, Anita's advice was, and, and you know that's great, Anita's advice was keep it simple and basic because it is, it is not a job description. It is not every move that you're ever going to make. So ours is literally three pages long. She approves it every year. We make some changes to it and she's like, this is great. This is exactly what I want. I don't want any more than this. Perfect. Have other folks experience? Anyone else care to add to that? This is Brenda. Ours is two pages. <laughs> Great. I can't believe it. This is news to me. <laughs> and she's okay with it. Good. And so do you use bullets then? Is, is it kind of got a lot of bullets in it to kind of weed out all the extra language that um, we normally put into things? Beep. We base, yeah, we basically go to the um, HUD Housing Counseling Handbook and what it says you need to get, you put it in there and describe it very briefly. Uh -huh. And I can share ours with you if you'd like. Oh, sure. If, if, if that, I could, I could, if you, if you uh, want, if you're open to sharing it with the group, I think that'd be great. Yep. Thanks. It's, it's pretty simple, so I'll share it with you. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. ours is basically the same, Karen. Yeah. It's, that's, I mean, Anita sends you the link and says, here, do this. <laughs> and, you know, then before she comes out, she's like, just make sure your plans work, your plan is updated with current dates and that kind of stuff. Okay. Good advice. All right. So let's talk about succession plans. So uh, part of the narrative um, in the NOFA is to talk about how you would handle things if you didn't receive HUD funding or if um, funding from other sources wasn't received or if something adverse like uh, your, your staff 
were to leave, how you'd handle that. And I think that um, most of you can answer this in a you know, pretty political way, that you have a diverse funding base and so that you know, essentially not receiving a grant in any one area probably would put most of you out of business. Some of the smaller agencies might have uh, a little bit more challenge with this. Um, that aren't as diversified. All right, so um, I got a question online about the MOU, and um, I also had a question live about the MOU, and I'm going to see if we, in fact, do need those. Um, a, a person on the line said that their work plan were, was approved in the past without them. So does that answer your question? to the extent I'm going to check. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so the last item here, which um, is about the HUD, about HUD research. I think this is uh, maybe a stretch for some of us, but the questions are, and this is um, um, not a priority, but just kind of a question worth two points, it says, is your organization participating in housing counseling program related research or pilot programs directly sponsored by HUD? Um, these are kind of separate questions. Does your organization maintain a system, not a client management, management system, so not Counselor Max or HCO, that HUD requires for housing counseling and that requires funding? I can't imagine any of us could answer yes to that, but maybe I don't know. Uh, does your organization maintain materials that HUD requires as part of the housing counseling program and that require funding? Maybe they, they require funding to maintain. And here, I think Nita maybe has an example. Those home inspection materials aren't available in Spanish, one of them. So you guys had to translate them. And I, I don't know if that's what they're looking for, but that was the example that came to mind for me. And so I want, you know, I think that you should include it and I'll include it. Um, but certainly it requires staff. You, know, you, have to, you have to pay your staff to do that and you have to maintain it. Um, so any of you who, um, and the key in this is that it's something required by HUD. So, you know, things required, you know, I think of um, the home inspection materials. Um, I was trying to think of, like, what else is required by HUD, um, you know, that you would have to maintain. And it, this was kind of a stretch. I think it's an unfair question. I think it only applies to a very small subgroup, and I don't think it should be for points. Um, um, but, you know, they're bound by a whole bunch of legal structures into what they have to include in these. So, can I, yeah. So we're also going to participate in a first-time homebuyer study. Okay. Sponsored by HUD, so we should include them? Yeah, if it's, if it's directly sponsored by HUD, yes. yes. Does anyone else have any activity that they're doing? They think might qualify for this? I was trying to think of other research or pilot programs. Karen, I'll have to ask our homeless folks in the department because I think we might have something going with that. And you know, think far. This could be maybe green building, renewable energy. I don't, I don't know, but you know, think broader because you know we can't get points if we don't try. You know, um, but again, it is just two points. So um, for any of these narratives that you don't have a reply to, you can list, you know, kind of NA not applicable. Karen? Yeah. This is Brenda. Through HUD, we do Shelter Plus Care, which requires, that's a homeless program, and it requires us to take part in HMIS reporting. So we do have to pay for that service through Wilder. Does that count? Well, are you maintaining the system? When I think about does your organization maintain a system, not a client management system. So is HMIS a client management system? Well, probably. Yeah. So I say no. Yeah. And that's kind of how I have to approach each of these questions, really, like, think them through. Someone asked, you know, would framework count? 
Um, is that a system? And I thought, mm, well, it's not required by HUD because uh, online education is optional. So that didn't fit. So I, I, I've really only come up with the need example in my mind. And then I guess you, you each have maybe some things on your own. So um, that's the end of the narrative. I did find some resources on fair housing, mobility counseling, you know, the, the NOFA priority stuff that you're welcome to use. And these are all hyperlinks here. And um, so then um, your information is uh, due. Can you believe it? I didn't, I, I missed my due date slide. I've been working like a mad woman, getting all this stuff ready and working on our answers. Here we go. It's due Thursday, March 27th, on a, you know, around before noon. And essentially what we need to do is um, combine all your workbooks together, um, read through your narrative, and um, the NOFA priority, see if we have more than a third in certain areas, and then write that up. And um, then the center has our own kind of application responsibilities. We have to sit, submit a budget. And we have to fill out the leveraging chart. Um, and we have to, um, our, our probably most hefty thing is to come up with um, and talk about our oversight activities. So um, I will be sharing that with you. Um, after the application, kind of what our plan for oversight is. Um, a lot of it um, will be things that you, you don't have to do besides email me something, perhaps. Um, but there will be um, site visits to anyone who's new um, within the first uh, two years or sooner, and um, probably more desktop reviews for those of you who've been approved year to year by HUD. Uh, was there a question maybe in there somewhere? I thought I heard someone trying to peek in. So um, that's the end of the presentation. I hope you found this helpful. I hope it answered questions that you had. Um, you know, I will continue to post any more questions that come in on that fact sheet and send it out from time to time. Um, thank you all for participating. I'm really interested.